Il y a deux ans, j'ai déménagé à Fort Collins. Ayant grandi sur la côte et dans les grandes villes, je n'aurais jamais pensé vivre longtemps à la campagne, près des montagnes. Ma première impression ici était à quel point tout le monde était sympathique avec moi. Je suis venu ici pour créer une société de cinéma. Même mes concurrents m'ont encouragé. Bien que cette ville ne soit pas très diversifiée sur le plan éthique, j'ai découvert que les habitants étaient très différents les uns des autres et que beaucoup de gens n'ont pas grandi ici. En peu de temps, j'ai appris l'existence d'une rivière spéciale qui unit tout le monde. Cache la poudre. La rivière a été ainsi à cause d'une histoire qui remonte aux années 1820 lorsque des trappeurs français, attrapés par une tempête de neige, ont été forcés d'enterrer une partie de leur poudre sur les rives de la rivière. En effet, la rivière a une longue histoire. Cette année marque le 24e anniversaire de sa désignation Walden Scenic. Mais je pense que ça fait bien plus que cela. Pour ne pas perdre de vue la valeur des choses que nous avons aujourd'hui, il est important de comprendre l'état des choses comme elles étaient auparavant. Pour cette raison, j'ai recherché les histoires les plus anciennes qui existent dans cette ville aujourd'hui. Avec cette nouvelle perspective, nous espérons pouvoir attribuer une nouvelle valeur à la nature qui nous entoure afin de la préserver. The pooter is pretty unique in that it is It's relatively undisturbed. Uh, the thing about fishing is it's just such a direct way to interact with nature. That to me is, is really pretty special. Sometimes I'm super focused on what's the fly doing? What, is, what do I think the fish is experiencing right now? Is he, is he at all fooled by what I'm, what I'm trying to do up here? And then other times, um, my mind's a million miles away. This time of year, the water is so clear. You can see the fish coming out of the rocks. And even when they don't take it, they just come up and check it out and swim back down. Over the past, you know, 100 plus years, the community has used the river actively and as much as they can. The people who um, were, had the foresight in the 80s to identify the parts of the pooter that could be designated wild and scenic and to go through that process, you know, had a vision for uh, the community decades down the line that we today are able to appreciate. The Pooter River is just a major part of my life. You know, we do everything on the river. A place that we get together with our friends and socialize, I do all sorts of things, ride my bicycle up the canyon. It's a terrific place. I've been kayaking on the Poudre River probably since 1977, I would guess. I think the river is just, you know, one of the key elements of the city. It's a place that brings people together, that in the summertime there's people tubing and picnicking and riding their bikes and just sitting along and enjoying it. People walking their dogs and bicycling and kayaking and rafting. I think the Poudre River is just one of the best things about Fort Collins. So I live in La Porte, but I work down on the southeast side of town near Harmony and LeMay, and it's not a very nice car ride. It takes me maybe 35 minutes of unpleasant traffic, but the bike trail takes about 10 minutes longer than driving a car, but it goes underneath of the major roads, and it's just a beautiful, quiet, athletic, and scenic way to get home. So it's much nicer than driving.
to a theater presentation at the CSU Theater, and uh, Walt Blackadar, a very famous kayaker, was uh, doing the presentation. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, I'd never kayaked before. I was a um, fairly hardcore mountaineer, big wall climber, Yosemite, Europe, things like that. And he presented a, a presentation of his solo descent of the Alsac River up in Alaska. And I, at the end of that presentation, I kind of told myself, well, I need to get into that sport. Uh, it looks really cool. And I didn't know back then, but the first year I was boating was a really big water year. And so I got uh, kind of whipped into shape rather uh, abruptly. <laughs> and over the years, I got better and better. And then big water years in 82, 83 occurred. And we were kind of ready for it. And we were wanting to do first ascents on the river. So anyway, I was, got familiar with the Lower Narrows, started running it quite fairly frequently. And then I started boating with uh, Steve Young and Rich McCramer. And I'd heard that Steve had uh, boated the Upper Narrows. Um, and I said, ah, you, know, you know what? You show me your lines on the Upper Narrows, I'll show you my lines on the Lower Narrows, and let's do the first continuous descent of the Narrows. And so we put our efforts together and uh, ended up running the first continuous descent of the uh, Narrows up here, um, just four miles up above here, five miles up. You get out there and you know, it's, it's an ultimate water park. I mean, it, it, this is a, a bigger ride than what you can do through man-made structures, I'll tell you that much. And it does, it's a lot more beautiful. It kind of grows on you over the years and it becomes almost a necessity to uh, have that as part of your life after a while. been coming down to the river for about 12 years and I think everybody has a different view of the river and its role in their life. Um, I just hear the sound of the river and it helps me relax. We'll play in the water with the kids. We have a picnic on the weekends. I love just the idea of the water that we're standing beside right now. Started up um, at the Continental Divide, you know, just a few miles from here, really not all that far. Fort Collins was one of the early working rivers where they used a lot of the diversions to manage water effectively in Colorado so farmers could have the water they needed for their uh, cows or for their uh, crops. I think the river is extremely important to preserve. It has a lot of pressure from just natural growth and development. It's really important that we keep, um, you know, we balance that growth and development with the natural aspects of the river. A healthy river is a healthy community. I believe the river is truly the lifeblood of our world. It's just one of the most fundamental aspects of life is being able to connect with your natural surroundings like that. I came to Fort Collins in 1975, very passionate about rivers and white water and, and everything related to that. I was a uh, road biker and rock climber. That's one of the things that brought me to this area. And I used to ride my bike everywhere. I do it because it's doing something I enjoy doing in, a beautiful, in beautiful places. And the poodle is that. to be outdoors and I think we have a need to preserve those areas they're all threatened so much I mean rivers are like an incredible resource in general I mean rivers are life we all need water you need water to keep a, a river healthy I love the Poudre River this is our local river I feel fortunate that we live so close to such a beautiful river we all need to continue to work on preserving it in the best way possible for people to enjoy. And for not just people, but nature, animals, all the other living beings who we share it with.
Vancouver is one of the reasons I live in this town. Um, it's just a refreshing kind of lifeblood of this community, I think. Fort Collins is where it is because of the Poudre River. It is, it's the core of our community. Whether I'm kayaking and I'm tired, or whether I'm out here bird watching and I've just had a nice relaxing morning, uh, I always reflect on what a great place it is to spend time. A saying that I pass on to people, it's that stress is water soluble. So this is a great place to come and just unwind, regardless of what you're doing with the river. Even though they occupy a tiny, tiny percentage of the total land area in the West, um, this is where a lot of the activity occurs from a natural history standpoint, and uh, that's very important to me. What is concerning is the amount of water that no longer flows through town due to the numerous diversions that have been built over the last 150 years now for irrigation, municipal water supply, and the like. Um, good reasons those diversions were built. Um, the question is, how much water can we take out of this river? How much, how much can we manage the flow through here and still have a river that functions the way rivers need to function to be healthy? Um, and there's a lot of us who feel we're already at least at the tipping point, if not beyond. Through here, just in round numbers, through this part of town, uh, during the spring runoff, which is an extremely important part of the, the cycle of the river from a natural history standpoint, um, about half the water is already taken out. Uh, there's a huge diversion that's been proposed that's going through the final decisions around permitting right now um, that would take the next 50% of that, of what's left, out of the river. Um, so we're very concerned about how do we keep the water in the river and how do we keep a natural hydrologic cycle going through the course of the year versus the uh, totally managed, more like a ditch approach that we have gotten ourselves into. And that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg of what's going on around here. It's evident for me at what point the flow is important for this ville et ses habitants. Nous devons l'existence même de cet endroit merveilleux à la rivière elle-même. Il est important que nous maintenir et préserver.